Hare Krishna everyone I am Kavya Buddhi Raja and welcome back to being Krishna conscious So in the previous video we discussed the real meaning of surrender to Lord Shri Krishna and in this video I am going to tell you the practical way to surrender unto the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna So let's get started Just to give you a quick recap surrender actually means anukulen krishna anushilanam as we concluded in our previous video we also got to know its real meaning through a beautiful verse that was spoken by shri krishna telling arjuna that o oh arjuna do not think of gaining or losing victory or defeat happiness or sadness just fight because i want you to fight fight for my pleasure do your prescribed duty for my pleasure we all have already discussed all of this if any one of you wishes to watch that video first i will definitely put the link to that video in the description box below today we are going to start from how to surrender unto the lotus feet of lord shri krishna what are the practical ways in which kaliyuga jeevas like all of us can actually transform our heart and work for the pleasure of krishna In this video I am going to tell you three things which are essential for all of us to surrender to Lord Shri Krishna. Talking about the first thing that thing is called faith. We must have complete and full faith on Lord Shri Krishna. We must have complete and full faith on his plans, his arrangements and his sweet wish. We all can at least agree that right now we have circumstantial faith on Krishna. our faith is according to the situation and circumstance of our life that we are going through for example if things are going according to my plans then i will be happy and i will have faith on krishna but if things deviate from my arrangements then i will blame krishna for everything and i'll be so upset i'll be so anxious that sometimes some of us even go to extent of saying that krishna doesn't exist i don't believe in the existence of god So that's why it is very much essential that we all have complete full and solid faith on Krishna's arrangements. Now the question comes how can we have that faith? How to develop that full complete and rock solid faith on Krishna? Well, faith can only come when you experience the divine presence. Let me repeat it. Faith only comes once you experience the divine presence. and experience will come once you apply the process let's try to understand this with the help of an example if there is a cup of milk and i ask you can you please take out butter from this milk now on the face of it butter is not visible but does that mean butter is not there already in the milk it is there and it can be extracted but how by applying a process known as churning you have to churn the milk in order to take out butter in order to take out ghee and other dairy products so once you apply the process of churning you will experience that the process does work and once you experience it you will have complete faith that whenever you apply the process of churning you will definitely get butter out of it similarly in order to have unflinching and complete faith in krishna's arrangements we need to experience we need to have certain divine spiritual realizations and for those spiritual realizations we have to apply the process known as navada bhakti the nine processes of bhakti starting from shravanam to hear about the lord to hear hari katha from the lips of bona fide devotees of lord shri krishna so this was point number 1 which was to have complete unflinching faith in krishna point number 2 how we can surrender to lord shri krishna is humility vinamrita a very famous verse that most of us must be knowing is from shikshashtakam verse number 3 trinadapi sunichena tarorapi sahishnuna amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari to be humbler than a blade of grass lying on the road to be more tolerant than a tree always ready to give respect and only that person 
Kirtaniya Sadahari. We'll be able to chant the holy name of Krishna constantly without any break. So humility is something which cannot be imitated. It comes from within. Only when you actually start applying the process of bhakti, humility will be a byproduct. Humility will be automatic. When you're actually sincere in putting your sincere endeavors to please Lord Krishna, then humility is bound to come. So this was point number two, which is Vinamrata or to always stay humble on this path of Krishna Bhakti, to always be eager to learn about Krishna, to always be curious to serve Krishna and his dear most devotees. Now coming on to our point number three. Brahmand Brahmite Kaun Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasad Pai Bhakti Lata Beej. It is only by the mercy, by the kripa of Sri Guru and Krishna that we come on this path of Krishna Bhakti. Without having Sukriti, without having Vaishnav Kripa, without having mercy of Lord Sri Krishna, it is not possible for any of us to enter this path of Bhakti or to even sustain ourselves on this path. Hence, Kripa is very important when we are on this path. Without mercy of Krishna and Sri Guru, none of us can make any advancement on this path. Just like this verse says, Brahmand Brahmite Kaun Bhagyavan Jeev, that in the whole universe, who is that most Bhagyavan, who is that most fortunate Jiva living entity? Guru Krishna Prasad Pai Bhakti Lata Beej. By the mercy of Guru and Krishna, he gets Bhakti Lata Beej, the seed of devotion. And only when you water the seed of devotion with constant humility, soon this seed will grow into a creeper and ultimately into a big fructified tree, which will not be only filled with devotion, but will also give shade of devotion to other living entities, to other Bhakti Lata Beej. So there are three things which are very essential for surrendering unto the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. Number one, having unflinching faith in Krishna's arrangements. Number two, Vinamra Bhav or humility. And number three, Kripa or mercy of Krishna and Guru. Now let us discuss certain practical ways which we can apply in our life and experience change. Just like in material education, the basics are a, B, C, D, E, F, G, the alphabets. Similarly, in spiritual education, the basics are again A, B, C, D. And today, we are going to discuss this spiritual A, B, C, D. Just like in material world, we have A for apple. In spiritual world, we don't have A for apple, but we have A for association, which means constant devotee association. The more you associate with devotees, the more you will get desire to love Krishna. Sadhu Sange, Sadhu Sange, Sarva Shastre Koe. Love Matri Sadhu Sange, Sarva Siddhi Hoe. It is the instruction of our Vedic scriptures that you should have Sadhu Sang, devotee association. Love Matri Sadhu Sange, even a little bit of a pure devotee association, Sarva Siddhi Hoe. It has the potential to give you Sarva Siddhi, the topmost Siddhi. And we all know that the topmost thing is to get Krishna Prem. So the key to get love of God is by associating with pure devotees. Now when I say associate, I do not mean that you just go and sit with them and do Prajalpa. Prajalpa means talking about anything which is not related to God or Krishna. What we should do is that we should go to temple or we should associate with pure devotees and we should discuss Harikatha. We should hear and speak about Krishna. We should do Harinam Sankirtan. We should chant together. And trust me, collective efforts of all to please Krishna pleases Krishna even more. Because now you're coming into group and you're crying out loud together for the mercy of that Supreme Master. So how will that Lord of the universe not be merciful upon us. So this was A for association. Now coming to B for ball? No. B for books. These books are not ordinary. These contains the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. As we all know that Srimad Bhagavad Gita 
contains the lotus words which came out directly from the lotus lips of Lord Shri Krishna. How can they be ordinary? And while studying the Gita, we must not think that this is just a conversation between Arjuna and Krishna. We must think that this conversation Krishna is having directly with me. So we should actually take some time out of our busy schedule and must try to read verses from the Bhagavad Gita to actually understand what Krishna wants to tell me. So this was B for books. Now C for chanting. Constant chanting of the Lord's holy name is the process which has been prescribed for the age of Kali Yuga. What could be achieved in the age of Satya Yuga by meditating for thousands of years? The thing which could be achieved in the age of Treta Yuga by doing fire sacrifices, by doing huge opulent yagyas and what could be achieved in the age of Dwapar Yuga by performing opulent deity worship or Archa Vigraya Seva. That same goal, that same destination could be achieved in the age of Kali Yuga simply by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we all must try to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And according to our Vedic scriptures, this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is also known as Tarak Brahma Mantra, which means that it has the capability of taking us across this vast ocean of birth and death and ultimately putting us onto the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Shamasundar in their eternal dham, Golok Vrindavan. So it is very easy to talk about the transcendental dham, Sri Golok Vrindavan, wherein Radha and Krishna eternally perform their transcendental pastimes. But it actually requires a lot of sadhana, a lot of spiritual practice to become eligible to be a part of their transcendental pastimes in their dham. So this is the right time that we actually start taking this human form of life very seriously because life is very unpredictable. It is very short. Nishwase nahi vishwaso kada ruddho bhavishyati kirtaniya mato balyad harer naam eva kevalam. We don't even know whether we will be able to breathe our next breath or not. Yet we set an alarm for tomorrow morning without having any surety whether we will be able to live even the next second or not. So what is the right time to start bhakti? It is right now. This is the right time to start following devotional principles. And under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada, it is prescribed that we all must chant at least minimum of 16 rounds. And for those people who are new into Krishna consciousness or who are beginners on this path of bhakti, we all can start by at least chanting one to two rounds every day of this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I have made a separate video on chanting. What is the meaning of chanting and how can we practically chant? What is the right procedure to chant this Hare Krishna Mahamantra? You will find the link to that video in the description box below. So this is the right time to actually begin chanting the holy names of Krishna and to start taking this human form of life seriously. So this was C for chanting. Now coming to the last alphabet that is D which stands for not dog but diet. Accepting only those foodstuffs which have been offered to Krishna which means not accepting anything which is not offered to Krishna. So this was the ABCD of our spiritual education, just like we have an ABCD in the material world. Similarly, we have an ABCD of the spiritual education as well, in which A stands for association, B for books, C for chanting and D for diet. And by following these practical processes, we all will start to experience something really divine, something really transforming, which will definitely help us to develop unflinching faith in Krishna's sweet plans and his sweet wish. So I pray to Krishna that may he be merciful upon all of us and may he show us the correct path that we all can follow to ultimately do everything for his pleasure. Hare Krishna, Sri Sri Radha Shyam Sundar Ki Jai, Jagat Guru Sri La Prabhupad Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.